Welcome to Syntax. Today we're talking about vibe coding. Now, before you before you shut it off, because you're <laughs> a, sick of the obnoxiousness of vibe coding, let me give it to you straight about like what we're trying to do. We're gonna we're gonna be talking about like just building random stuff with AI that might be kind of good, but you don't necessarily care. We're gonna talk about what it is and whether or not we should be doing this and and some examples of of stuff we have vibe coded. I don't know. People <laughs> uh, the other words that be, people have been using this is like what like personal software kind of fits into this, you know, or or throwaway software I've been calling it is uh, I've built quite a few things recently where I just need it very quickly. Once it served its purpose, it it gets thrown away. Yeah. So it, it's funny that you say that personal. I, mean, I do think personal software is connected for a lot of people. And I think personal software might be more connected for, I would say, more responsible developers than it is <laughs> for other people. If, if that's the best way to say that, because yeah. uh, what I found with vibe coding is that specifically it's a lot of uh, inexperienced people doing it because they are becoming productive with it. Uh, but they cannot be that productive without it because they don't have the knowledge base. That's an assumption, but that's my experience, what I'm seeing on on socials. So vibe coding, what, if you've never heard of this term, you're not on social media, you haven't seen people talk about it, what the heck is it? It's basically coding entirely using prompts, uh, things like cursor or Claude code, these types of systems that are agenic, that do a lot for you, that are adding multiple files, connecting things, running projects. And the idea with vibe coding mostly is that you as the developer are not getting really deep into the code. You're not really paying attention to the close details. Uh, mm -hmm. You're mostly just running it, seeing if it works, seeing how it works, prompting again, tweaking, prompting again, prompting again, just on repeat until the thing does what you want it to do. Um, it's a form of AI slop and right now, you can actually make stuff with it. it. You know, believe it or not, people might, if you're not getting into the stuff, you can be surprisingly effective vibe coding. But again, it ends up being, being a lot of slop. And uh, there's, I think there's certain instances and projects and things like that that yeah. make more sense for exploring that type of way. And, and sadly, I think the inexperienced developers amongst us uh, might not understand when and where that that line is totally i i find myself when i when i get into it and i try to correct a problem i i find sometimes i'm two or three prompts in and i just have to scrap it and sort of start it start again from that prompt because it just starts making it, it worse and worse and totally. it starts adding a whole bunch of stuff but the the whole idea with, with vibe coding is that you don't necessarily care and as long as it works it works. And I'm kind of somewhere in between because it's surprisingly, some of the stuff is surprisingly good and it's kind of fun. The stuff that you can make with it where you might not have been able to possibly, the people are making games uh, levels. I always is building this like whole airplane thing. Mm -hmm. They're just building whatever they possibly would want. And certainly that will make people who are good at this stuff mad, but that always happens in every single industry. When something comes along and makes it easier, it doesn't do away with the need for those people, but it certainly makes the intro level sloppy version of something very, very attainable. We saw it with, with drag and drop website builders, right? Yeah, Us totally. WordPress devs hated these Dreamweaver drag and drop or these square spaces, things like that. We hated that because it the code that it outputted was garbage, you know? But the reality is, is that a lot of people don't necessarily care uh, as long yeah. as it works and does what the thing that they're trying to do. Yeah, I remember the first Adobe web builder that I had that had a drag and drop UI and it's like, oh, I can get something looking really nice and then it wouldn't work in various instances or it's full of bugs or all kinds of weird stuff. I think right now, in 2025, you know, March 2025, as it is right now, I think vibe coding is good for demos. It's good for personal software, which we'll touch on that. It's proof good of for concept. 
proof of concept. And it's also good for Sentry at Sentry.io because your code is going <laughs> to suck sometimes. It's going to be terrible. Uh, it's, and you might not know it's terrible, which is, man, that's like, that's that Sentry's ideal landing spot is like, uh, you have some bugs in your code and you don't know about them. And like, Just if you're vibe coding, AI slop running, yeah. yeah, you don't even know. It's not like you don't even know about your bugs. You don't even know about your code, let alone the bugs, which is going to be full of them. So, <laughs> uh, so check it out at Sentry.io. Solve all your problems that way. And there is actually an AI tool within Sentry too. So maybe at some point, Sentry part becomes part of the AI vibe coding flow, and you just click fix it for me. Oh, there's a bug. Fix it for me. Fix it for me. And then it just fixes itself. So check it out. Sentry.io forward slash syntax. Sign up and get two months for free with the coupon code tasty treat all lowercase all one word uh this podcast is presented by century in case you could not tell that but either way i do think that it is a major concern for vibe coding specifically if you are an advanced developer and you're using these agentic coding solutions as an assistant as like a junior level programmer that you're watching very carefully and you're approving all of the code line by line and you're reading it and you're really comprehending exactly what's going on for every single thing that's added to your code base one it's going to be a lot better at the end of the day uh but two you might actually get very frustrated and want to do some of it yourself because the the AI stuff can do a whole bunch of changes at once. And you're like, that's not what I would have done. Uh, and that's a bad idea. Whatever you're doing, it's a bad idea. Let me do it myself. Move. It's mine, you know. But other people, I, I think they just they're just checking to see if that that shit works. And that's it. You know, so I mean, it's it's really funny because like when the the AI images stuff first hit, I don't know, probably t t three years ago. Yeah. Everybody was posting the most hilarious images that popped up, right? And then when the chat stuff popped up, everybody was posting the hilarious chat back and forth. And then that sort of died out. And, and now that you can just like you literally make a game or, mm -hmm. or build some software, we're having that in as well. People are, are making fun software. They're building little games and whatnot. And I, I think that will, will die down as people go, yeah, of course you can you can generate a dog eating a hamburger, you know, like, oh, wow. You know, like that was that was the most hilarious, mind blowing thing a couple of years ago. And now you see oh, it. Yeah. Like, ugh, like, of course, like anybody yeah. can do that. So I, I think we're sort of in that stage right now for building these types of things. But not to say that it's just like it's just garbage as well, because like it, it, I'm thinking right now, my kids want to have met, wanted to make a math game for a yep. while. You know, they want to make like a flash card, but like, imagine we could build, I thought like, yeah, we could build that. Let's set across some time. And for me to make a little flash card game from scratch, like that's, I don't know, I could probably do that in six hours or something like that. Yes, totally. But I yeah. could probably make something with the 3D world where you run around and answer questions. I'd probably make that in like an hour or so. And now, and that would be, so exciting for them and i think like that would be a net win because they're excited yeah. about computers they're excited about coding and they're going to be learning math i know i was thinking about this a lot with like you know my son and i are getting into game development and it takes so long to see any major real change in it especially because yeah. i'm not great at it that like he he's losing attention and i'm doing yeah. my best to be like look we got a guy he's walking around now uh he's not pointing in the right direction he's not doing the right animations but he he moves and my son's is like okay great when are we gonna get to like build mario yeah because uh, he'll he'll play <laughs> mario maker where you're just dragging and dropping everything onto the screen and it's so nice and fast you get instant results or whatever and that's what he really wants you know out of the experience and yeah i, I do think that instant feedback or, or visual whatever it's great for being inspired there's all kinds of things i think a lot of it falls apart when you try to build long-standing production code bases. Um, not that you can't use these tools, but you need to treat them more like a an assistant that you're, you're yep. really watching closely uh, rather than vibe coding it. I think about this all the time. I have friends that are like, oh, I made this uh, app that does this whole thing and I just did it with prompts. It was super easy. Like, I'm going to turn this into a product. And I'm thinking like, all right, well, do you know anything about authentication? Do you know anything about databases, security? Do you know anything about anything and just the answer is no to all of those things, right? And without those answers, and while the, you, you today probably can't confidently ship something that is good <laughs> without those those tools and knowledge, and, and uh, you know, there there's still that gap there. So 
yeah, vibe coding for now, in your production <laughs> for now at least, right? Yeah. Vibe coding your production code is only going to be I, I'm going to say it's not good at all because again, vibe coding kind of implies that it's you're not even looking at the code really or you're not getting deep into yeah. the code. But yeah, for throwaway personal software projects, demos, inspiration, I think it's it's totally valid and and works just fine for that stuff. Totally. I I think I'm going back and thinking about the stuff that I've built in the last little while. And, and it, quite honestly, I don't even remember half the stuff that I've I vibe coded because I just I build it. It does this thing and, and I throw it out. Um, but yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll throw a, an image up on the screen right now is I'm building a, a, a parametric grid um, that I'm 3D printing and I'm, I'm going to be hanging this grid in our gym. And then you can put all these hooks into this mm. grid and hang up all the different attachments for the gym. And normally this stuff is you just print off a sheet of it. Uh, you print off as many as you want and they all click together and, and you're, you're up and running. However, because I want to put a nice border around it, I realize it's much more complicated because I need a top right, bottom left. Like it, it's basically the sliding panels of CSS in real mm. life. I need the I need the corner pieces. I need totally. the, the tops, the bottoms, the lefts, the rights, and the internal pieces. It's nine different possible pieces. And I was like, man, I'm having a hard time visualizing this. So I started like writing it, scribbling it down on a piece of paper to try to visualize what I needed. It's a four by six grid. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start prompting my way into this. So I built totally. a little yeah. thing that I said, I have a four by six grid and I need to define what each of the edges are called, right? Top left, top right edge right edge left etc internal and then i just i just kept saying good now visualize it good now make me a cut <laughs> sheet of how many need to be printed for each piece and like that took me like 15 minutes and i was just like okay i i, I never would have not never but that would have taken me much longer and i don't have a, a nearly as nice of a visualization if i were to build this myself i probably would not have built it myself i probably would have made a spreadsheet or, or a piece of paper or something like that. Yeah, and to be clear to, to people listening, it's not because you cannot do that. You are very capable of making uh, this interface. A grid, yes. <laughs> a grid or any of this stuff. It, the, the benefit really comes from the speed and effort that it takes. That's really where you, where you see the benefit. Like, for instance, yep. um, we had my whole MIDI controller thing. And like, yes, could I have absolutely coded a MIDI piano UI, which is the keys, they're all, you know, they're the way the piano keys are shifted. Or I can ask Cursor to create a piano for me aesthetically in CSS and HTML, but I can guide it. I can say, use grid or Flexbox for this. I can use this or that, give it this aesthetic, whatever. You can guide it with the technology. You can tell it the approach to use. You can give it hints and stuff like that. But I didn't vibe code that entire app, but I vibe coded the keyboard interface, because I just flat out didn't want to take the time to do it. And it's again, it's just a, a for fun project, right? So I do I do really find that that to be like a nice little sweet spot. It's something that you could do, you know how to do it, you know what it looks like when it's done right. And you can just ask it, save me some time here, do me a solid. Mm -hmm. I think another area for this sort of vibe coding is you're, you're going into things that you're not necessarily comfortable with. So mm -hmm. the the Roomba, I wrote a whole bunch of C++, I think. I forgot what language it was. <laughs> yeah, you know? I and <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. it was C++ and I was debugging uh serial connections and and sort of going through that and and I built the whole UI to control the the vacuum, the Roomba thing. I have a video on you can go watch it. I built that whole whole thing and that was I, I guess you call that vibe coding cuz I if you look at it it's it's not ideal. There's a lot of like weird react hooks and and stuff, but but it worked. It worked really nice and it was able to get it up up and running really really quickly. So both languages where you're not really comfortable with or, or areas of stuff you've never worked in before um, and then UIs and things that you need to just crank out as as quickly as possible. Um because because you're just learning. And it's not to say that I didn't learn anything. I think I came out of that project way smarter than I, than I went in, right? Like I know so yeah. much more about microcontrollers and, and I feel so much more confident in C++ now. Not that the robot can write it for me, but like 
I, I feel like I understand a lot more about it. And I don't know that I would have gotten that understanding reading a book. But yes, controlling a vacuum, I would have certainly got there. <laughs> Yeah, it is a it is a whole thing because like I think there is some degree where vibe coding is stupid. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing and you don't know what the code is is doing and you're not learning anything from it and you're just pushing yeah. out more slop into the world, uh, I don't like that. I think that's bad. <laughs> but if if you are using it as a learning opportunity, you're using it to excite yourself, you're learning it to make things be productive. Mm -hmm. All of those things, I can get behind that, and I can see a benefit to that. So, um, oh yeah, yeah, different. I, yeah, I think I think of like somebody, like a kid right now, trying to build a game, and and they hit problems, and they're trying to debug it, and they're they're typing in, and they're reading the replies. Ah, it might be because we have a race condition here, and I go, oh, that's what a race condition in is, is, and we and we solve that. And there's so many different things you can learn very quickly just building these silly little throwaway applications. So as I know, we get a lot of angry people, a lot of angry replies about when we do AI stuff on this podcast. Yes, um, totally. But I think I think it's a net win for when you're trying to learn something and you're trying to just, you're either trying to fix a problem that you have for your own personal stuff or you're trying to learn something new. I think it's a net win with this stuff. Yeah, totally. All right. Uh, anything else you want to say about vibe coding or do you just want to vibe uh, off? I want to vibe off, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't even know what else to say about it, but that's it. Uh, let us know what you have vibe coded. I'd love to hear it. Uh, it's uh, it's great, to see, great to see everybody's replies. Yeah, totally. Love it, hate it. What do you think? Peace. Peace.